Hello out there. Welcome to Wake Up to the Bible. I'm Daniel Kaplan. I'm here with my father, Dr. Kaplan, and together we are going through the books of the law, Genesis through uh, Deuteronomy in a year. So we're doing a little bit every day. Today's reading is going to be Genesis 21, 22 through 34. We'll read it and then we'll discuss what we get out of it. And we're reading from the Robert Alter translation. And it happened at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, captain of his troops with him, said to Abraham, saying, God is with you in whatever you do. Therefore, swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my kith and kin. Like the kindness I have done for you, so shall you do for me and for the land in which you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I indeed will swear it. But Abraham upbraided Abimelech concerning the well of the water that Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing, and you too have not told me, and I myself have never heard of it till this day. And Abraham took sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech, and two of them sealed a pact. And Abraham set apart seven ewes of the flock, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What are these seven ewes that you set apart? And he said, Now the seven ewes you shall take from my hands, so that they may serve me as witness that I have dug this well. Therefore did he call the name of that place Beersheba, for there the two, the, did the two of them swear. And they sealed a pact in Beersheba, and Abimelech rose, and Phicol, captain of his troops, with him, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a tamarisk at Beersheba, and he invoked there the name of the Lord Everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the land of the Philistines many days. It's a little self-contained story here. What are some of the things that you get out of this uh, little uh, political situation? Well, here, here you have uh, you, uh, God's people uh, in a state of exile, but yet they, they, they are seen as an obviously successful community. And so uh, those around them, you know, want to uh, make sure that they, uh, that they, that they benefit from the relationship. And uh, it seems there may be a little bit of double dealing here. Uh, you know, Abimelech acts very innocent, but you, you know, one wonders, uh, you know, but maybe but when all is said and done, evidently they do get, work out an arrangement. But but it does it does show the, you know, in a sense the um, what ha what has happened to Israel over, over the centuries, and particularly you know when you focus on the on Jewish history, uh, they have been a minority and and often have been uh, successful in spite of uh, the hostility around them. And so you know they they've had to come to some kind of terms with those around them and. It's 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 taken various uh, uh, directions depending on the on the country. Uh, it, it it has been a while since I reviewed this material, but I but from my youth I remember that in Jewish tradition, the, 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 this is not looked upon uh, particularly favorably. I'd like to go back and review why that is, but but the the rabbis felt that. Abraham didn't need to make, make make this kind of concession to Abimelech, and uh, the seven ewes uh, here uh, in Jewish tradition, uh, seven uh, great biblical figures die uh, <laughs> as a result of these seven ewes. Uh, one of them being being Samson. But I'll go back and check that out next, for next time uh, that we get together. Uh, uh, it, it seems to me a reasonable thing, you know, I, I think most of us reading it would, would think this is the best thing to do. They've come to you. They want to work something out. You know, they're, they're more, they're, you're very wealthy and, but yet they're the majority, you know, they, they, they're the ones that run the land, even though you're a prosperous uh, inhabitant, it's better to have some kind of agreement so that you can uh, interact appropriately so you have some kind of legal leg to stand on if if you have some complaint you know so that, that all makes sense now bear sheva could be the well of seven or the well of the oath so you know both meanings are are there you know bear sheva becomes a very important location through history uh and um as i recall in uh, verse 23 where uh, this is translated a tamarisk tree. I don't know what Robert Alter says, but I believe that Hebrew term here is Aishel, Aleph Shin Lamed. And if I'm wrong, if I don't remember this correctly, I'll correct myself next time.
But here it says Abraham planted a tamarisk tree, but I, and the term is is uh, olive shin lamed. And so the rabbis come up with achila, eating, lina, uh, say, uh, st spending the night, and stia, drinking. And so they look at it as as a kind of a hint of Abraham again as as being hospitable. Uh, hospitality being a characteristic of Abraham, but there's more to it than that. The way the Jews look at it is that Abraham would, would was very keen to entertain guests and be hospitable, but as part of it, he spread the, the teachings of monotheism. So his hospitality was was with also with the idea of of uh, spreading uh, God's way of life. Now, apparently, it's been postulated that in terms of a a uh, literary device that whoever um, that when this was put together, uh, you have Abraham and Abimelech's name both coming up seven times each to kind of bring into again that seven. Seven is going all over the place. I think from a narrative standpoint, this is really giving us an insight into how Abraham got so wealthy to a certain extent people that are wealthy are generally good at making deals and working with people and you can see that when the person comes to him he's not overly defensive he's very gracious i guess my dad says some people maybe think he was overly gracious in the situation but you know on the other hand it shows him to be shrewd in a sense because sure he has the wealth but the other people have the numbers right and when you when you have when you have resources and the other people have men you've got to be very careful about how you you manage that situation so to me i think it's a little bit of an insight into something it's what you might call character development for for the purposes of the audience it gets you a little bit more of an insight of the type of person that abraham was outside of the plot as it were you know it's a little bit of shading to let us know the kind of person he is the word is a shell just you know to to clarify i want so i looked it up just now uh it, abraham planted here it says a tamarisk tree so uh anyway that's just uh, as i said way back a long time ago uh during the days of menachem Begin, you know the vietnam war uh had produced refugees uh, they were they were boat people and some some Vietnamese found their way to Israel somehow. I don't know how they did it, but I remember when Menachem Begin it took them in, and he said, "We're going to be hospitable like our father Abraham." And uh, the, the Los Angeles Times had a letter where somebody wrote in and said, "You know, my friend heard that Menachem Begin was going to allow these Vietnamese refugees to stay in Israel," and so she said, "How Christian of him." <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think though one example you have here is the way Abraham acts though because he says you know swear to me you're not going to do this horrible stuff and he could be like well who do you think I am what kind of person do you think I am? but he doesn't he just says yeah you're right I won't you know and um, I think that is just an example for us when we're dealing with other people something to keep in mind that you don't always have to defend your honor sometimes you can meet them where they're at which is their skeptical opinion of you especially in this situation because you have a financial difference right and people are often distrusting of people with wealth there's a whole rule in the leviticus about not you know um, applying justice wrong by bias against the wealth so he's just smart enough to realize that and i think that's savvy and i think that's one reason he could keep his stuff because part of being rich is keeping your stuff and a way you do that is by not making other people around you angry with you that's right. all right any other comments well, it just reminds me of the proverb, a soft answer turns away wrath. And Abraham also did bring up this issue in a, in a way, and, and the king, you know, went along with him uh, as well, you know. So uh, it, it seemed reasonable. This, this, this uh, as I said, this agreement here seemed reasonable. But I want to check as to why it is that the rabbis were so displeased with it. Uh, so come back uh, uh, another time and, and you'll hear. <laughs> and we call that a tease. <laughs> yes, we'll, well, we'll figure that out. And speaking of teasing, yes, you can make sure you keep track of everything going on because all you got to do, like, subscribe, hit the bell, tell your friends, build up a, you can build up a following and we'll be able to do things, you know, increase the production, do more content. Who knows what we can do? Resources matter. Look at this account. Resources matter, right? So uh, please uh, do whatever you can to get the word out. It's a great year to read the law with us. In the meantime, we will see you tomorrow.